All right, let's jump into cryptography and discuss what it is. So cryptography really involves methods to transform data into unreadable forms. And this ensures that sensitive information is protected during transmission or storage. And as a result, it also ensures that data is kept private from unauthorized access. And it achieves this by employing mathematical algorithms along with keys addressing objectives like confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. So let's look at some of the origins now of digital cryptography and how we got to where we are today. Well, its lineage really traces back to ancient times, and this is when secrecy and secure communication was definitely quite paramount. It was employed by civilizations to encode critical information and ensuring it remained concealed from unauthorized eyes. And we can see that in some early ancient civilization examples when we regard Egypt using hieroglyphs that served as a method to transmit encoded messages as well as a language in general. The intricate nature of hieroglyphic symbols pose a challenge for those attempting unauthorized decryption, even still to this day. And another example being Julius Caesar. During this historical period, the Caesar cipher was born. And this is an interesting technique that involves shifting letters within the alphabet by a consistent number of positions. And while simple, it laid the foundation for encryption principles. And then we come to the Middle Ages. So advancing beyond rudimentary methods, we witness the emergence of more complex ciphers, like the Visionnaire cipher from France. And this innovation involved using a keyword to determine the shifting pattern. This added a lot more layers of complexity to the encryption process as opposed to just a set number of positions in the alphabet. Fasting forward a bit now to the World Wars, World War II marked a pretty pivotal juncture for cryptography. Germany's Enigma machine showcased the critical role of encryption in military strategy, and it was at Bletchley Park, situated in the UK as the top secret home of the World War II codebreakers, that embarked on a pretty remarkable journey of deciphering the Enigma encrypted messages, which ultimately contributed significantly to Allied success. Coming up into the modern era, we have the arrival of computers, and this ushered in a pretty transformative phase for cryptography with the computational power. We witnessed the development of cryptographic standards that harness the computational power of machines. This started with the Data Encryption Standard, or DES, introduced in the 1970s, and this became a benchmark for secure communication. Its successor, the Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES, took center stage, and this presented a refined approach to encryption that addressed emerging security challenges. Finally, we come to the crux of it all that makes everything today work with public key cryptography. And this was a monumental shift, really, that occurred with the introduction of asymmetric encryption. Pioneered by Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman, this groundbreaking concept allowed users to generate a pair of mathematically linked keys. One public, the other private. This innovation really unlocked the potential for secure data exchange without a shared secret key. And this significantly elevated security levels. And in today's world, cryptography plays an essential role with our daily lives. The fact that we have it is what makes this global internet powered economy work the way that it does. From secure connections to web browsing and email correspondence and all of the confidential information within databases and cloud environments stored in a secure manner and inaccessible to those without authorized access. So we'll hear the term cryptographic algorithm being tossed around quite a bit, but what does it really mean? And really, it's just a mathematical algorithm. It's more about the intent and design that makes it a cryptographic algorithm. And what we can say about them is that they serve as sort of like the workhorses of encryption, decryption, hashing, and digital signatures. Or in other words, really the objective to convert plain text that we can read into secure, unreadable formats and vice versa. And finally, a key component to cryptographic algorithms is that they must be robust. They must be secure. They must be able to resist against brute forcing and pattern matching for someone to be able to decrypt or at least pick up on parts of encrypted text and be able to reverse some of them to a legible state. So let's look at the types of digital cryptography out there. And there are really two main categories of which symmetric cryptography exists and then asymmetric cryptography. The first one 
This method involves around the use of a single key for both encrypting and decrypting data. And it's known for its speed and efficiency in processing large volumes of information. However, a critical challenge is the secure exchange of that secret key between the sender and the recipient. Any breach in that key exchange could potentially compromise the entire communication. So now looking at asymmetric cryptography, this approach actually employs a pair of keys, one of which is a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. The public key can be openly shared with anyone, while the private key remains confidential and held by you. This innovation really solved the secure key exchange problem present in symmetric cryptography. And while asymmetric encryption is relatively slower due to the complexity of operations involved, its strength really lies in its ability to establish secure communication channels and verify the authenticity of messages. Then we have hashing, which plays a crucial role in ensuring data integrity. And that's a bit of a different concept. And hashing generates a fixed length hash value, or digest as it's called, from input data of varying sizes. And hash functions are designed to be one way and irreversible, meaning that it's computationally infeasible to reverse engineer the original data from the hash. An example of applying hashing and asymmetric cryptography together can be seen with the concept of digital signatures. And in this case, what we see here is the sender hashes the content of a message and then encrypts the hash using their private key. The recipient can then use the sender's public key to decrypt the message revealing the hash and compare it to a newly computed hash of the received content. If they match up, well, that means that the sender must be the owner of the data and could have only been the one to have encrypted it. And since the hash is the same, we now have verification of integrity and verification of authenticity of ownership. So let's look at some of the data that goes into these cryptographic algorithms. The first thing that we have is called plain text. And plain text serves as the unencrypted human readable representation of data embodying the original content of the message. So something that you and I can read in its natural state. If we draft emails, create documents or share messages, we're interacting with plain text data. It's the form of data that is easily understandable and accessible to us, free of any form of encryption or obfuscation. And then we have ciphertext, which is the outcome of applying cryptographic algorithms to plain text, which will result in an appearance of unintelligible characters, ensuring that even if intercepted, the actual content remains confidential to those without the proper decryption key. Finally, we have clear text and clear text closely resembles plain text in terms of human readability, but it differs in intent. While plain text represents data in its unencrypted form, clear text specifically signifies data that is not meant to be encrypted or concealed. In other words, clear text is data that hasn't undergone any encryption process and is shared or transmitted without any deliberate protection mechanisms. So in review, just remember that encryption involves the transformation of plain text data into ciphertext using an encryption algorithm and a specific encryption key. The primary objective of encryption is to render sensitive information unreadable to unauthorized individuals during transmission or storage, thus ensuring its confidentiality. And also keep in mind that mathematical operations are part of this process. Modern encryption relies on complex mathematical operations that make it practically impossible to reverse the encryption process without the corresponding decryption key. Finally, there is a component of key security and a strong encryption key is one that is sufficiently long and complex, making it computationally infeasible for attackers to guess or brute force. As well, proper key management practices such as generating and storing keys securely are essential to maintaining the security of encrypted information.